In 2006, APM terminals took over the Apapa ports in Lagos, Nigeria, and started a chain reaction of improvements. The group has focused on West Africa for more than 60 years, in particular on Nigeria. When, uh, when people come into, into Africa uh, to, to execute new theories or new ways of management or approach, uh, most of the time they, they bring theories as they are and they try to implement them uh, the same way here. Most people came and failed. Uh, we thought uh, AP, AP Moller may, may face the same, uh, the same issue. But of course, we forgot that uh, AP Muller have worked in every other country in the world. And uh, here we see, after four years of operation, they've done a real success story. Nigeria is the largest economy in West Africa. With an annual GDP growth rate of nearly 10%, it is on its way to becoming one of the top 30 economies in the world. This was the first time APM terminals had taken over an existing port, and they found themselves facing many challenges in their bid to bring the port up to international standards. In the past, some vessels have stayed uh, in a queue waiting outside the terminal for around 20 days or even up to 30 days. People found uh, difficulties locating their containers and the terminal. So we, we, we had to hire some young boys uh, whom we call truckers. Their, their main job was to uh, keep looking around day or night, all right, searching for a list of containers we give them and try to locate them. So in the next morning when we come, then uh, they, they can show us where the containers are. It soon became clear that large investments would be necessary to make the business venture a success. But Nigeria is not an easy country to do business in. If anybody look at us from the outside, then they will see like the place is very, very difficult uh, to run business. Main challenges that facing Nigeria is the lack of infrastructure. APM terminals immediately recognized that the best things they could do for their business and for Nigeria was to improve the infrastructure and the efficiency of the port. Therefore, they invested $176 million in infrastructure, handling equipment, hardware and software, and local employee training. Investments in automation and handheld devices resulted in a paper-free environment reducing bureaucracy and corruption and speeding up the entire operation. This resulted in a drastic reduction of waiting time for vessels, from 28 days in 2006 to less than one day in 2009, saving Nigeria's economy approximately $200 million annually in congestion fees alone. This meant that the container volumes handled in the port rose by more than 40% in the first three years. Over 800 containers are landed and transferred every day of the year, and the Apapa terminal now handles 45% of Nigeria's total container traffic, accounting for 50% of all imports to the country. And the cost of doing business in Nigeria has been reduced as a result of that because um, nearly everybody who is doing business will have seen the effect of presence of the APMT. The impact of the improvement in the ports on a nation that imports almost practically everything is phenomenal. The impact of the terminal on the Nigerian society is immense. Eight shipping lines use the terminal facilities and every day of the year four to five hundred trucks collect containers full of goods for Nigerian businesses and consumers. In 2009, the turnover of the terminal was $175 million, 
of which 72% is circulated back into society through local procurement, salaries and taxes. 20,000 local businesses and manufacturers depend on the services delivered by the terminal. And it is reckoned that the improvement in operations has resulted in 32,000 jobs in the local community and across Nigeria. The success of a PAPA as a financially profitable venture is crucial. Success, however, can be measured in broader terms, which is why the terminal operates with a three-dimensional thinking, where people, environment and the economics are all important for the long-term development. The good thing about APMT is that there is health care services. It helps me to concentrate on my job. I don't have to rush home or if there's something wrong with the kid. As the hospital is nearby, my wife could just take the boy there. A lot of effort goes into the training of employees to promote safe and productive working conditions. This is why APM terminals have invested in a crane simulator, the first in all of West Africa, in order to promote the safety and productivity of crane drivers. This has resulted in average crane moves rising drastically from 13 to 35 moves an hour. The lack of a constant power supply in Nigeria is an issue for the environmental dimension of the terminal. This means cranes have to be diesel powered, resulting in higher CO2 emissions per container. In 2012, however, APM terminals will reduce emissions by 15% by investing in green technology. When the ports are congested, you're tying down trillions of Naira in resources that's not getting turned around into real money and plowed back into the economy. The economic dimension of APM Terminal's business philosophy includes the realization that their presence plays a part in the development of the Nigerian economy. The public sector must realize that uh, the private sector is the engine of growth of uh, the economy. The sooner you can bring something in, and get it on the streets and sell and turn over your investment, the better. APM terminals know that their best contribution is to shorten as much as possible the time from the arrival of the vessel to the time goods are delivered to customers. By achieving this, they have tripled the number of containers whose contents are delivered every day to Nigerian society. Investments in infrastructure, employee training, safety and health care mean that APM terminals have built a highly productive and profitable business that is making a substantial contribution to growth and prosperity in Nigeria.